Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Hellboy movie thoughts. I quite like the setup and payoff that they do a couple of times in the film, such as the... It's established that red is fireproof. You know, Hellboy yeah, isn't affected by the flames, and that makes a pretty good amount of sense, considering where he's supposedly from. And then at the end, you know, when she kisses him, and, you know, the flames touch him as well, and it doesn't hurt him, and you have that sort of thing, you know, it's not directly said, but you just, you can tell, you know, they go together well, you know. She may never be without the flames, but he can handle the flames. There's, you know, there's that thing of, that line of, you know, you love people for the the bad things about them, you know. And it's sort of saying, you know, he can handle the bad thing about her, you know. She may never be a, completely without the flames, but he can handle that, you know. There was some other thing, but it escapes me at the moment. I quite like the sort of peace, you know, established between Jeffrey Tambor's character and Hellboy. They're near the end where he, you know, tells him, no, 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 you light a cigar with a wooden match. That way you preserve the flavor. You know, you have that Manning, that's his name, Tom Manning, I think. You know, that after all that, they still do have that sort of thing. And, you know, Manning has just gotten that other agent killed because, you know, he kept insisting, no, we're, you know, we're not, excuse me, we're not going that way, excuse me. And Hellboy is like, excuse me, something is going down. You know, and the whole sort of clock theme of, you know, near the end, you know, Cronin is in that room with all the, the the cogs and stuff, and, you know, he's crushed by a giant... How epic of a death scene is that, by the way? You know, he's not just impaled, he's crushed under that huge, you know... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Get back up. Get back up from that. I dare you, you know. That, and, and you know, tiny little... What's it called? I don't think they're called cogs, but I don't remember the actual name. The Manning throws those, you know, smaller things at, you know, Cronin. That's quite funny as well. You know, but, but yeah, you have that huge pendulum, which is like a hammer kind of thing, I guess, because of Russia, you know. And, you know, I have to mention... Ivan, you know, the uh, the top half of the dead body. You know, presumably he's been in that grave for so long that some of the bones connecting his upper half to his lower half have rotted away, you know, or you know, something along those lines. So it's just the upper half, and he's he was hung, so Hellboy carries him around by, you know, holding on to the rope that he was hung with. And just, his lines are priceless. You know, especially that last one. I was better off dead. You know, that is just perfect. And just the, the concept, the... How do you sit down and get the idea who should lead them around this, you know, cemetery? Well, it should be a dead body because, you know, he's been there for a while, so, yeah, you know, and he won't be freaked out by Hellboy and all that, you know, it can't just be some regular human, so, yeah. 
I like the sort of escalation of Samael and, and just the the bit where they're you know talking about you know going over all the names and Abe just goes through you know don't just everybody knows people like that now you're asking for a specific bit of information and they just read the entire bit without you know just skimming it first and trying to find the information you're looking for. Nope, just reading through. And of all those, you know, ridiculously... These these detailed, you know, threatening names that he's been called, only one of them is actually important. And it's just that, you know, what, what is it? Hound of Resurrection or Dog of Resurrection, something like that. And Hellboy's like, ah, uh, I don't like the sound of that. And turns around where Samael, you know. And I love how they do that as well. They do it at least one more time, you know, when Manning cuts his finger or something like that, and then, you know, Hellboy turns around, shh, turns back around, where's Cromanin, you know. Beautiful that, you know, because if you just see them sneak away, or you see them hiding, or, you know, it's just, it's really effective, you know. Suddenly, the villain is gone, you know they're dangerous, and you're just like, oh, where, where do they go? You know, and suddenly it's a horror film, you know. But the escalation of Samael, with first there's just the one, and then, you know, he, he tries to kill it a couple of times, and finally he does succeed down by the, you know, when, he, when we find out he's fireproof. And then, you know, there's that bit of, you know, for every one that dies, two, no, two more will, you know, rise so you know now there's two of them and then they go back there with you know Abe and I did I do wonder why didn't they I mean Abe saw the vision so he knew that there was that spell that for every Samael killed two more would you know come back so why didn't they expect for a Samael to be down there in the water with the eggs you know I mean, isn't that kind of obvious? There's eggs there, obviously it's trying to protect them. But, yeah, anyway, so... You know, now there's two, because he killed that one. And so, yeah, there's two that attack, and they lose several agents. Got to love also how all the agents, you know, you've got Agent Clay, Agent Lime. I think there's one more that's also a sort of... Yeah, I don't remember the word. But, yeah, I think you know what I mean, what clay and lime is. And, but, but, yeah, you know, and then by the end, you have, like, I don't know, five, six Samael, and, again, a ton of eggs, you know. And Hellboy runs over there and, you know, attacks and kills. And this is one of those scenes where, you know, this is probably the best example of Hellboy just rushes into a situation and if the others aren't there to rescue him he will get himself killed because he very nearly you know he didn't have to rush ahead and get you know he didn't stay behind and strategize or plan it's Liz who saves him you know and I think that's a great idea and kind of you know it's empowering you know and she suddenly makes a weapon out of the thing that she has never been able to escape you know and, but, but yeah, just that, you know, she saves him because he's too headstrong, you know, and she, she knows better, kind of. Also gotta love when she walks in on him, you know, writing all these, trying to write a note for her, and just the, the floor is just covered in, you know, paper he'd crumple up and toss on the floor because... He didn't think it properly, and and you know, that right there is just a thirteen-year-old in love. You know, that's that's essentially what. And and he's like, oh, I uh, I wrote something I should read to you, and then it's like, oh well, you know, she's going out, and he's like, ah, oh, and you know, and they he ends up sitting up there with this little boy who's like, you know, a big fan of Hellboy, and you know, Hellboy eats the cookies, drinks the milk, and they just sit there for, you know, a while, and he's just, you know, scowling because of, you know, John, you know. I guess when 
yeah. When John promises, you know, he'll take care of Liz and, you know, he'll, yeah. I guess he maybe should have added, as long as you don't expect me to come back for the sequel, you know, I'm protecting her, you know. Guess he didn't figure she'd ever get in trouble again. Also, that was the other thing. The, you know, early it's established. You know, when, when we see him as a kid, he has horns. And then the next time we see him, he's filed them down, and we get the explanation. He files them down so he won't look so different from us, you know, so he won't look so different from a human. And because the horns, you know, very much a symbol of this sort of, you know, his, his heritage. And, you know, they even have the line, you know, Tom Manning says, you know... Even if you kill all the freaks, there's still one freak left. You. You know, and you have that sort of nice kind of blade thing going on with, I'm sort of one of them, so I try to fight them because I know that they're bad and I feel responsible and I'm powerful enough that I can do it. I know them, so I can destroy them. You know, and... But I do like that with this character, it is less sort of... It's less of a searing hatred... I would say, than expressed in, in Blade, at least in the movies. You know, I don't know. I don't know how it is in the comics, neither with, you know, nor... Not with Blade, not with Hellboy, so, anyway. But, but yeah, you know, so he files the horns down, and then near the end, the horns grow back, and he, you know, returns to his original form, and the, the fire, you know, the whole thing, and... You know, the the cross hits his skin, and, you know, because it is a Christian cross, it burns his skin because he's of the devil. And then you have that sort of thing, you know, remember who you are, and he breaks off the horns. You know, again, the, the symbol of his, you know, yeah, his heritage and such. So, yeah, you have that, yeah, again, a great kind of... You know, that, that's something very visual and very active that the character can be doing to sort of show I'm not willing to be part of this. You know, and because he, you know, he isn't willing to fully open the gate, yeah, you know, they don't have to, you know, the I'm guessing the huge god that you see, you know, breaking out of the prison and all, I guess that would have been impossible for them to defeat, so instead they just have to defeat the smaller one inside, you know, Rasputin, that comes out when, you know, he's killed. I love that Cronin, even before he, you know, uses his blades, he's just a great killer. You know, he just, he aims with the pistol, and pretty much every shot he fires is just a kill. You know, and he empties the clip, oh, what are we going to do now? And, you know, out comes those awesome blades, and he just slashes everyone. I also love how, in this film, it actually works with, in spite of the fact that there's next to no blood, really the only blood spilt is when they resurrect Rasputin. You know, Cronin bleeds sand a little bit, which is also just a really cool and and the you know the lips and the eyelids and all that stuff just missing, you know that's really cool. But but yeah, you know you don't miss the blood. I would say they also I didn't notice this myself, but they mentioned in one of the documentaries. Excuse me, when one of the excuse me when the first Samael is being beaten with the telephone, you know, change is coming out of the phone, and that's substituting blood, you know, because you expect that when something hits something living that hard, blood should come out, but they're not allowed blood, so they use the, you know, the, the corn, coins to some and with Cronin the sand. Now, Cronin... 
I guess what resurrects him once he's on the table is Rasputin, who apparently can just move in and out of anywhere he wants at basically a moment's notice. But I guess that's also, you know, it's that's not what makes him dangerous, you know, it is the the plan to bring forth the god. Other than that, he's just, you know, he has powers, but, you know. Him resurrecting, Sa or freeing Samael, you know, from the thousand angel tears, or what it was, I guess that was a distraction? Or, you know, I don't know, maybe it was so that there at the end, there could be someone to help guard and take care of some of the, you know, agents from, you know, the, the Bureau. Other than that, I don't see how they fit into the plan. Now, but yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that Cronin's blade that they find and that Abe reads was you know, left behind intentionally so that they would actually, yeah, so so that they would be able to keep up because, you know, it was intentional for them to find it because they needed a Hellboy there, you know, so they, need, they needed to lure him there. And I guess the attack on Liz was to infuriate him so that, you know, he would agree to come there, so, you know, to, to ensure that he come there. I mean, I get why they do it for, you know, dramaturgical reasons. Obviously, we need, you know, for, for his love, for his great love to be threatened. And as well, it, it helps lead to her rejoining the agency, you know. I suppose that's more or less what I wanted to say. I like that part of Hellboy defeating the Cthulhu beast there at the end is actually him being eaten by it. You know, that you have this sort of, you know, he really isn't, he isn't flawless and he isn't, he's not exactly a strategist, you know, it's just kind of, well I have something to explode it. I'm going to try to, you know, attack him with that. Oh, crap, it's eating me. And, you know, he blows it up. And, yeah. I don't know, maybe he wanted his gun back. Yeah, that almost worked as a reference. Um, yeah, I suppose that does cover it. I really like the design on several of the, you know, Samael especially. And I like that we spend, you know, I'll get to the second one, it'll get its own videos, but part of the problem with that is that there are just so many creatures and we spend very little time with, you know, several of them. But with this, you know, with Samael, you really get to, you know, we get to spend a decent amount of time with the creature and you know, it's not that it, it never actually gets less scary or less cool, you know, it just, we, we sort of get to know how it works and what it does and you know, all that good stuff. So, you know, I thought that was a really good decision in that, you know, even if I don't completely understand why, you know, Rasputin and company needed to bring back Samael. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.